just making sure. Um, yeah, I've been kind of gone, but I've been busy. I've been getting all, you know, some painting done in the bedroom, and I've been watching, trying to get up on Doctor Who. This is the first Doctor Who, and um, I have some plans for that. I'm trying to come up with some costume ideas. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> And, um, I've been learning a lot about this election stuff, and it's driving me insane. If you want the truth about what's going on with the elections, don't watch the news on TV. Get online to, you know, like Facebook would have it, YouTube would have it. Um, there's all kinds of other news groups that actually rec record or report the truth not selected truth, you know, like Donald Trump's all that wonderful, you know, um, get the truth. Do your homework, do your research, get the facts, because we're going to hell in a handbasket, and it's scary. Uh, one I like is, it's called Now This Election. They are pretty good. Um, getting out what's what's going on and the other one that I like is called the Young Turks they're more you know they're a younger bunch but you know they they uh, are uncontrolled by you know don't say anything to upset the populace and all that kind of nonsense or whoever the money is they state it like it is call it good well so, I ain't going to tell you who to vote for. I know who I don't want you to vote for, and I'll say it. Trump. Trump's an idiot. <laughs> you know, uh, that's like trusting my ex-husband. Not a good idea. Uh, anyway, um, enough said about that. On the other side of a little bit of a political thing that happened recently... I'm not sure how to respond to it. I'm, we'll see how it goes. Um, I have a service dog. He is, yes, the big brown one that y'all have seen. His name is Gunner. His training's coming along. I should push it harder, but I want to make sure I got all my ducks in a row as I do the training. And uh, so I've been taking him to church and various other places. And what happened recently is that they're having a ladies weekend and I signed up to go well after I signed up to go of course you know I like is there anything special we need to know and I said well I have a I have a service dog and I have a slight food restriction basically if you keep it at real food like real vegetables real meat real uh, fruit not the processed crap or canned crap I'm pretty good. I can take it from there. But if you have all the processed stuff, I won't. I'd have to bring my own food. So um, I was all kinds of, you know, excited about this because I have I the last church I used to go to, they had women's weekends every year and they were a lot of fun. I always did all kinds of work for them. And this year they have a. Um, I have, I've been going to this new church since, I'd say 2010, 2011, somewhere in there. And uh, I like it. It's a really nice church, but every now and then you get a moron. Um, having a service dog is not the easiest thing to put up with. And, um, you know, it's never mind your temperament and the dog's temperament, but you also have the temperament of all these other people around you who are usually a bunch of idiots. And um, I've had issues that came up there. And I have one pastor where, you know, if I have any problems, just state it. We got it good. Well, this ladies weekend got set up. And this other, a different pastor, who's a man, said, oh, we don't want the dog in this situation or that situation because, you know, and I'm like, huh? 
and and he didn't have the audacity to call me and tell me himself we had somebody else call me and tell me and I'm like well that's called segregation and discrimination and that's against the law and I'm not going to put against put up with it and so I said I'll talk to him well we go to church on on Saturday well we go to church on Saturday because my husband works on Sunday so Saturday we went to church and um, he comes up and he tells me well this is how I feel about it we're exempt because we're a church which he's right you know churches do not have to uh, follow in accord with the ADA law as far as service dogs go I don't know about anything else but the service dog things they're exempt which I think is stupid but anyway um, so we had this uh, he said, like, well, we're exempt and blah, blah, blah. You know, we have a legal right. And you can't go, you know. And since, I says, but this whole thing is at a motel. They're serving the food. And he says, yeah, but it's still our function and we hired them to do it. So it still, we still falls under us. And so your option is to cooperate or don't go. And I says, well, I guess I'm not going. Oh, we can't have that, you know. It would make us look bad, you know. Um, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, church was starting. And he says, stay here and I'll talk to you after church. And, of course, he's begging my fa my husband to talk me into going. And I made the comment that the, the one pastor who helps me out a lot, he says to make sure I educate the individuals, you know, who need to be educated. So when this particular one that's a problem comes back, he comes back with someone else and he says, okay, he's going to be the mediator and, um, you know, this is my side, this is your side, this is what's going on. And so we got to talking back and forth and he brought up the couple that used to live in our house and how he didn't allow them to bring their dogs to a function at the church and they got all mad and left the church. And I'm like, yeah. I says, a service dog is a medical, piece of medical equipment. It is not a pet. It is not for fun. And believe me, it's not fun. Not when you're crying in a grocery shop and you got a kid kicking your dog. And mom's okay with it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I kind of set them straight. I says, those two, that couple are mentally disabled and they cannot function without the dogs and you told them that they couldn't bring the dogs and that's a, that's such a slap in the face this pastor is black and I used a particular phrase that was racial um, to give him an example of how much of an insult it is to someone who has a service dog and you tell him oh you can't bring that dog over here so no, we don't go, we don't play that. And, um, so we had discussions and all this kind of stuff. And he, I, I think I finally got him to understand how hard it is to have a service dog. And how I am with a service dog. And, um, which is, you know, like when I, when I go on these kind of trips, I make sure that my dog is properly bathed, I make sure he's properly brushed so he's not leaving stuff everywhere and people who are allergic aren't going to have as much of a reaction. And I told him, I don't have to ask these two questions when I walk into a situation. I do not have to ask them, but I do anyway. One, who's allergic? So that way we know not to be around the individuals that have an allergy situation. Two. Who's terrified? And the reason why I ask that is, you know, obviously people have fear of dogs. And my dog is a 95 pound, what the heck is that? Um, he's, a, he's a wonderful dog, he's a sweetie, but he's big, very big, and he's scary. And um, so I can talk to these people and say, okay, what's an what's a understandable situation that we can be in in this situation? So um, the person who was sitting with us, he said, you know that place has a little bit of an extra room 
right around the corner. Yeah, you know, it's kind of like, you know, they could take out the wall and it's one big room. You know, we could kind of make something where, you know, those, you know, we have the dog in one side and those who are afraid or allergic can be on the other side. I, said, I could work with that, you know, and, and that way everybody can share and feel free. And I told them, when it comes to the food, I says what I would prefer to do personally because uh, it's going to be a buffet, what I would prefer to do is to have someone, you know, once we find out where I'm going to sit, to have someone stay with my dog at my s spot, just stay with him while I go get my food at the buffet and then come back with it. He is okay, you know, you can take a dog up to a buffet, you know, a service dog up to a buffet, it's not a problem, not a big deal, but when you have tight, uh, you know, the area is kind of, you know, really tight with a lot of people. You know, people like to pet the dog and mess with the dog, and the dog gets distracted and that kind of thing. And I end up with a plate full of food, and the dog happens to pull just right. My food goes everywhere. I don't care for that, and I really don't care for people to for dis distract him while he's trying to work. But I, I'm okay to have someone, because the room, from what I gather, the room's not that big anyway, he would still be able to see me. I can just go up, get my food, come right back, he's good. So, um, we came out with an agreeable how all of this is going to work type of thing, and I put down my rules. I said, you know, he's he is a working animal. He is not to be, you know, everybody handling him and distracting him, because he has a job to do. Thank you very much. And I would appreciate it if people don't be yelling at me because I have the service dog. And uh, those who have questions, please feel free. You know, and matter of fact, I guess at the uh, when they have the sign up thing, if they they're going to have someone, uh, if you have a question about the service dog, please feel free to write it down so we can address it at that time. And um, they gave me a room where we can go directly outside from our room. To the you know so I can take him for walks for uh, when he needs to go outside and all kinds of stuff they 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 did work hard on trying to make accommodations for me okay uh, without making me feel weird but um, what I got you know once we came to an established agreement that was workable for both sides because you know I don't want to force the issue on them, but I don't want to be segregated either, if that makes sense. So when we got all done, the pa this pastor that I've been talking with, he gets up and he says, I want you to know you are the uh, service dog ambassador for this church. And I was like, huh? <laughs> he goes, you know, before before this couple came along, I didn't even know what a service dog was. And I says, I've learned so much from you. And I didn't realize how much I offended this other couple. And and I didn't know the, all these things. So, uh, yeah, as far as I'm concerned, you're going to be teaching the church about service dogs. And you are uh, now the ambassador for service dogs for this church. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> Didn't know it was that big a deal, but um, but in a way, when I walked away, I felt like I made a big accomplishment because there has been problems, and I've told them I've told them of the problems that I had at that church and what I've had just getting on with life. And a lot of times, you just want to do your shopping, you just want to go to the gym and work out, you just want to do your thing, and having all that is crazy, and so. We came up with agreement, and uh, I told him, I, you know, I, I, I said, it's not like I'm going to be with everybody the, the whole time, the whole bit, because i got to take the dog out for walks. When it's time to eat, i got to take him to go eat so I can eat without him wanting my food. Uh, I have to, you know, play with him, get his energy out, because otherwise he'll be bouncing off the walls. So we'll figure it out. We'll get it all worked out. But I'm... I am looking forward to this, and I hope it works out well. We'll see. Kind of excited. We got our first ladies weekend. 
You guys have a good one. Night.